367, 730. What does that number have to do with the housing market up here in North Florida? I'm going to show you tonight, and it also may have something to do with why prices aren't coming down like people were expecting, okay? But that's not all I'm covering. Tonight's show, I cover a lot of things with the market up here in North Florida. In fact, this is what I'm going to be going over. I'm going to be looking at what is the current active listings, which is your inventory, how many sold in the last seven days, how many homes are under contract, how many new homes sold in the last seven days, what is the current active Active, active new home listings, that's their inventory. How many active listings are foreclosure status? How did people pay for these homes? What percentage of homes sold under list, at list, and above list, and much, much more? Hey, you know what? I'm just a regular guy. My name is Tom Kerr, and I happen to be a real estate agent up here in North Florida. That's right, and every week I bring you these real numbers in real estate, what's going on. And what we're gonna do is go into the back end of my MLS since I'm a realtor, and I share that information with you, and we look up a lot of data, and I'm gonna put it all into a spreadsheet for you. So first, let's get into those MLS, that back of the MLS, and we'll start off with those active listings. All right, here we are in the back end of my Northeast Florida MLS count. And like I said, we're gonna look at those active listings first. Now, what I want you to do is as I go through all these different statuses, I want you to focus on this area right here where it says view results. That is gonna be the number when I click on the different statuses. So first we're gonna, we're gonna activate the um, active listings. And we see that number is 9,596. Okay, next we're gonna take a look and see how many sold in the last seven days. That number is 512. Next we're gonna take a look and see how many are active under contract. That number is 1,394. Now, those are ones that they're under contract, but they have a contingency. Um, that contingency can be um, inspections, appraisals, uh, financing, you know, anything, having to sell another house, whatever. Next, we're going to look and see how many um, went pending in the last seven days. That number is 419, and what that is, once they clear the contingency, then they go into pending status but not all pending sell. And when we add up the active under contract and the pending, then you get your total under contract. Well, let's go back to, I always forget to do this. All right, go back to the sold. There we were, the 512, and what I'm doing is that's when I have to export it. So when I export this, um, it's going to give me a lot more data, not just what you saw there, but it's going to break it down. I break it down from the single families to condos and all. So when I do my Excel spreadsheets, you're going to get a lot more data out of that than what you're watching right now. Okay, now let's take a look at the withdrawals. And the withdrawals are 106. Now, withdrawals are people who's house it's still an active listing it's just not being shown so it can't be shown when it's in withdrawal status and people will do that you know if they got to make repairs or if they have health issues you know things like that whatever reason they don't want people you know seeing the house or having it shown but they still want to keep the listing active because then they'll reactivate the showings okay next we take a look and see how many expired in the last seven days that number is 159. Now these are different than withdrawals because these did not sell and so now they're off market, the listing did expire. Okay, now let's take a look and see how many new homes sold in the last seven days. That number is 117. And let's see how many new homes are active listings. That number is 2,267. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is take a look at the foreclosures, pre-foreclosures and short sales. Now these are ones that are active listings with that status, okay? That's what we're pulling. We're just pulling the information out of the MLS, what the ones that are status in those type, you know, of uh, statuses. All right, so first let's see how many in the active listings are in foreclosure status. That number is 242. Okay, now we go and take a look and see how many are in pre-foreclosure. That number is 18. And how many are short sales? 
That number is 32. Okay, and like I said, all that data is going to be, uh, you know, I'm going to pull out of that um, everything, the residentials and the condominium information too from everything that was brought down because I can pull those different um, property types and everything out of, out of this download or this export that I did. Hey, you know, right now I'm on location in front of a model home, a new model home. I actually actually happen to be in Palm Coast, Florida today where I'm doing the show. And this, this home will be featured on my Sunday night show. Now, all that data that we just looked at that I exported out, I, go, I put it into, um, it comes into an Excel spreadsheet like looking like this when it comes out, which is kind of hard to read. So I clean it up and put it into my own Excel spreadsheet that looks more like this. It makes it a little bit easier for you to read and to follow because I've been doing it for over two years and we can track all these numbers and see what the real numbers are and what they're doing. While all that stuff is calculating and putting together, let's take a look and see what those rates did this week. Okay, we start off here with the 30-year fixed rate, and down here at the bottom is where we left off, and that will be on all of the charts. It was 6.81 where we left off, but look at that. We got a mix of arrows, which brings us up to 6.91 to finish it off. So we have creeped up. We were heading in the other direction down, but it has creeped up a little bit. Okay, next we look at the FHA rates because they're generally a little bit less. And we see down here at the bottom it was at 6.28. Um, just one green arrow, very little green. And then the rest was uh, pretty much reds up and uh, going again back in the wrong direction after we were heading the other way. All right, let's take a look and see what those VA rates are. Okay, the VA, no green arrows at all. Everything's all red. Last week it was at 6.3 and we ended up at 6.4 right now. Again, going in the wrong direction again. Well, the rates continue to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that, huh? But um, still, they're, you know, they're still better than they were you know, a couple months ago. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at those Excel spreadsheets that I was telling you about and what, look and see and compare all the other, like last week's, the other weeks, and see what the trend is and also compare it to last year at this time. All right, here we are into the Excel spreadsheets and we're gonna take a look here and what we're gonna see is we are in season three, week 11. That's right here, that's the current. Okay, and that is in the yellow column. The other yellow columns uh, is the previous week. Okay, so we can see what last week's was and compare it. Now, right next to this in the white column is last year, okay, season two, week 11, with its numbers, and then YOY is the year-over-year -year percentage of differences. Now, something I started last week, right here you see, SFH, that's single family homes. I have taken the single family home only data out and plugged it in, and we're gonna start comparing that week by week, as you can see over here, season three, week 10. So as we, and then the condominiums, I do in a separate sheet. Okay, it's gonna come up a little bit later here, and I'll quickly go through those. All right, now we're in season three, week one. Here we are, 9,596 is our active listings. So as we can see, that that number is up from last week but these haven't been big jumps, okay? They are increasing, but not big jumps. Sold 512 this week, okay? That is up from last week's 467. Okay, down though, but still from last year. Active under contract, 1,394, that's down. Pending 419, that's up. So the total under contract is 1813, which is up. So we have more this time right now that's up for active contracts, okay? Total contracts. Withdrawal 106 expireds were 159 new homes sold jumped up to 117 and new homes active that inventory is 2267 which brings us back up to almost a fourth of all the homes sold are new homes all right I scroll quickly down To take a quick look at the condominiums here, snapshot active condominiums, okay, is 1,146. Sold condos was 44. And the percentage of actives that are condos is 11.94. This is the first time since we've been doing it that it dropped below 12%. Okay, as we look over here, we look at the single family homes and we see uh, actives 7128. So that inventory is definitely up, as you can see here, was last week's in this column. Uh, solds 410, though that's up. 
active under contract okay down a little bit pending went up so again total under contract um, is up withdrawals were 76 expires 128 new single family homes that were sold was 95 so that is definitely a jump from the 66 last week and new homes at active listings is 1751 of single family homes okay percentage of homes that are sold are new and that percentage is just over 23 percent so slightly above what it is for everything Okay, how do people pay for these homes? All right, um, cash, all right, was 28.9%, almost 29%. Okay, so the cash has been going up. Now, I have been hearing, you know, more and more about investors buying, and I get phone calls from more and more investors wanting to buy properties, okay? So there is an uptick, so why is that? If we're getting ready to crash, why are the investors starting to buy more properties? All right, uh, conventional for almost 42 percent um, fha a um, little over 14 va a little over 13 and other 1.76 so not a whole lot of difference amongst everything we saw a little bit down below the conventional because the cash ticked up okay our foreclosure numbers down 242 pre foreclosures up one to 18 and short sales dropped 32 for the overall 292 still waiting for that foreclosure tsunami to happen like in 2008 all right now we take a look at the percentage of homes that sold under list at list and above list and that number there um, dropped a little bit under list to un just under 74 percent homes that sold at list also dropped and then the ones that sold above list actually went up okay um, you know i mean the different things factor into that a lot of times it's uh, new homes that started off like six months ago when they were building them and then they, the prices gradually went up a little bit. So, cause we do look at that original list price or that's people that are pricing the blow market to get multiple offers. All right, when we look at the price categories, okay, here we are week 11. We look homes that sold in the 500s, okay, dropped to just under 30%. Homes that sold in the 400s, okay, um, up a little bit. Homes that sold in the 300s, dropped a little bit. Homes that sold in the 200s, dropped and then homes that sold below 200 actually went up as you can see and then over here on the right we show you how many new homes were in those price codes because there was a total of 117 so none of them were in the 200 and the uh, be below 200 in the 200s there was 22 okay that's quite a bit uh, 46 in that 300 nine in the 400 and 40 in the half a million and above and again that half a million and above in the 300s seems to be the sweet spots for these home new home sales now speaking of new homes we take a look here and we look at list under list and above list of them the percentage that sold under list okay dropped a little bit the percentage that sold at list also dropped but dropped a lot more and the ones that sold above list well we had a we had a pretty good jump there okay about eight percent jump all right okay now the next thing i do is i look at what is called mls advantage there's a lot of other mls boards now i'm giving you the information in the back end of my mls is northeast florida mls which is the largest up here but there's other smaller boards around and everyone cross sells because now with the internet you know it just happens you know so to give you an idea of just how much is going on up here in north florida i look at mls advantage which gives us the sold numbers for all that not only that but then i also break it down by county so I show you how many were sold, like for instance, in Flagler County, where I'm at right now, or St. John's County, or Duval County, or Clay County, whatever it is, and I put that into an Excel spreadsheet for you too. So right now, let's look at MLS Advantage. All right, here we are in MLS Advantage, and we're gonna take a look at those nine counties, Baker, Union, Bradford, Clay, Nassau, Duval, St. John's, Flagler, and Putnam, and that's what makes up the Jacksonville metro area. Okay, we go over here and hit that search button and see what it calculates and comes out okay that number is 740. all right now we put that into the chart here and we're going to see we had a 740 total there at the bottom and how did it break down by counties baker uh, doubled theirs to two union 
got out of the goose egg from last week. It had two, Bradford had three, Clay County was up with 74, Nassau just up a couple, 57, Duval County up 20 of them to 260, St. John's County showed us at 192, Flagler County dropped to 121, and I'm surprised to see that, and Putnam County almost doubled themselves at coming in at 29 units. All right, now we take a quick look at those condominium numbers. All right, here we are, the um, actives. This is week 21 of the condominiums, and it, you notice that weeks are different because I started the condominiums at a different time, but I've been doing those for 21 in a row. And so again, like I said, this Excel spreadsheet is downloadable out of my newsletter. All right, active, one, 1146, okay, same as last week and not much, much difference there. Sold went up 44, active under contract 135 dropped, pending went up 23, so the total under contract 158, so they actually dropped a little bit from last week where everything overall went up. Withdrawals at 21 and 19 expired, none new sold and nine showing active. So I don't know what happened to that other one, maybe they just took it off the market, but it, it didn't show up in the sold column. All right, how do people pay for those condos? Okay, we see that after last week's huge cash offerings, we're down to 59% for cash, which is still high. Conventional 36%, FHA, you know, about four and a half, okay? And again, the ca reason for the cash buyers being so many, it's not investors, so to speak, it's people that, because the lenders are tighter on financing condominiums, although we did have an increase here, you know, from last week's, okay? But it's more in line with what it's been before in the last few weeks. The ones in foreclosures, 23, down one, pre-foreclosure zero, short sale still at one, so total is 24, down one from last week. Okay, we look at the condos that sold under list, at list, and above list. 88.64% sold under list, holy crap. Um, pretty much like the others. I mean, they're, they're high right now, because the condos is a scary market. Condos that sold at list, 11.3 cent, and none sold above list. So there will not be a condo of the week that sold above. Okay, when we break it down. Whoops, hold on, I forgot to mention something. There we got on the right there, we've got the amount of units that sold at that. So 39 sold under list, five at list, and none above. Okay, now we look at the price categories. All right, condos that sold a half a million and above, almost 16% in the 400s, uh, just under seven. Condos that sold in the 300s, okay, now that dropped quite a bit there from last couple of weeks, okay, to 13.64%. Condos that sold in the 200s, <laughs> came up, okay, a lot. And then the condos that sold below 200 dropped some. Over on the right, we see the totals. Those are the number of condos that sold in those price ranges. And once again, nothing new and new, so we move on. Okay, because of that law that says that the condos that are affected are the ones that are in the three-story or above or 30 to 25 years older. We show how many sold with total stories. Now this is the total stories of the complex, not the individual unit. So as you can see there, um, nine were a one story, 21 were a two story, nine were a three story, three were a four, one was a 10 and one was a 17. Okay, because the year is important, we break it down. And what we're showing is the year of this condos. These are individual units. So there was one, one story condo was a 1974, another one was 1974, another was 2004, and so on. I'm gonna scroll down and you can just pause the video as you please. And then we break it down by the counties where these condominiums were sold. Four of them were in Clay County, 26 in Duval, 10 in St. John's, one in Flagler, three in Nassau. And this last chart here, I show the original list price, the close price, which was the sold and the difference. Okay, how much below the list price was. And then you can see the different degrees of the list prices as we went down.
Hey, you know, if you like the way I put this show together, I'm not talking about the numbers, whether you like the numbers. A lot of people don't like the numbers, but if you like the way I put the show together, then give me a thumbs up. And if you want to be part of this Bubble Watch Nation, then just subscribe. I have more videos on my channel than just the market updates, and I think you'll find a lot of this uh, the stuff entertaining and informative as well. All right, right now, what we're going to do is get to those, those uh, headlines. What, what those numbers? What was that number? 367, 730. That's it. That was the big number. Okay, so now we're going to see how that has to relate to the market here in Florida. Okay, let's check it out right now. All right, Florida's popul. Here we are at the headline. Florida's population estimated at 23 million. Okay, now. It says that this report right here, it says is slightly more than 23 million residents as of April 1st, the first time the state has hit that mark in its annual estimates. All right. So last year, we we're at 23 million, 2,597 up from 22 million, 634, 867. So how did I get my numbers? All right, well, we just take a calculator and we take that number what it is now and then we subtract that number and now we're at 367 730 is the increase okay think about this all right what are they saying they're saying that the population increased from that amount okay so this here is even after people have died and moved out of the state this is the population, okay? Not the amount of people. Now, 365 days in a year, that means 1,000 people a day, okay? The population's increasing, okay? And I saw another report saying that it's been like this um, for all this decade, okay, so far. Um, this population increase. They're expecting it to taper off some, but th this is what I'm telling you, okay? When I say that that it's a supply and demand thing. Like I said last week, you've got, you know, more than a thousand people a day moving in here, you know, but you're netting this much um, into the state. I mean, what do you think's gonna happen? Do you think the prices are gonna collapse as long as those people still come in? And then the people that have the inventory, we get an increase in inventory. People, that's people putting their houses up for sale. But what are those people doing? If they're selling their house and buying another house in the state kind of you know cancels it out now if they leave the state and buy someplace else okay that's that's a real inventory increase but other than that it's not you know so um, I mean you could go really deep in all these numbers but I'm just trying to show you some things out here what's going on as to why what's leading to maybe why the houses aren't collapsing in prices like everyone thought they would or said they would. I mean, to think about it, interest rates up, inventory up, but the price still went up, okay, in general. Yeah, you're getting some deals there, here and there, where it's less, but if they went up 40% and they're taking off 15 now, you know, it's still a net increase. You know, I mean, those numbers are, are astounding. That Now this is, those numbers are during a time when things have slowed down. It's all after COVID and everything, and when we were supposed to be in a crash, right? And that's your numbers of Florida. I mean, it, it even boggled my mind when I saw it. I didn't think it was that much, okay? I thought it was gonna be less. Hey, you know what? Next, we're gonna get to those houses of the week. This is where I look at a house that's sold below list, and I look at a house that's sold above list, and the same thing with the condos. Sometimes the condos, we can't find one that's sold above list, but I'm gonna show them both to you. We'll see what they paid for it and see what the appreciation was on those homes and how it all worked out. And if you're in the market for a home or you're looking to sell your home there, then just put me in the mix, okay? Give me a call at this number that you see right there below or a text, or you can shoot me an email also from the email that you see below. Hey, you know what? Things are changing with the real estate set up here on buying and selling homes. It's not just Florida, it's the whole country. A lot of you have probably seen the headlines news. I'm gonna talk a little bit more next week about it, but not tonight, I'm not going into it all. We're gonna to get to those homes of the week right now. All right, we're gonna start off here first with the house that sold below list price, okay? And this is gonna be a whopper, all right. 
built in 2023, 2,741 square feet, okay? That's, that's pretty good size house. The three bedroom, two and a half bath, all right? Um, let's check out the history on this thing. Okay, this has a long history, okay? It is a new house, okay? It's a new house. Went on the market there February of 2023, over a year ago, for $949,990. Now, keep in mind, they could have put this one on the market um, while the foundation was being poured or even before, okay? That it, some, some new homes, they do that and some they wait and put them in the MLS like um, when they're like about 60, 90 days out from being completed. So I don't know in this particular case. All right, but it was 949, 990, okay, when it started out. All right, kept that price for a while all the way up until October of last year when they dropped it to 759, 990, okay? Now that's a pretty big drop and no other increments in there. Well, yeah, we did. It's funny, they, they increased it and then they decreased it back again. Okay, as you can see, as I look into this. All right, let's scroll down or up. All right. 477 days on the market. Let's see, at 477, they were asking 638,990. They ended up taking an offer for 630,000. So that came out to $319,990 less than the original ask. Holy crap. All right. Let's take a look and see what that worked out to or square footage wise. All right, um, sold price per square foot, $229.84. Okay, which, you know, is about right, be about right for a new home, okay? That's fine, and they did give concessions of $15,000 towards closing costs. Now that was probably the regular built-in deal um, when you use their lender, then they give you, um, you know, they pay for uh, most of your closing costs. So that's probably what that was. Okay, since it's a new home, there's no appreciation calculator. Okay, next we're gonna look at the house that sold above list price. All right, this is 2024. So that's gonna tell me another new construction. All right, 2,239 square feet, four bedroom, three bath. Okay, this one's in Duval County. All right, I forgot to mention the other one. Um, the other house there was in St. Johns County, okay? So let's take a look at the uh, history on this. A little bit shorter, okay. Started off um, this year here in April at 341,990. Okay, in less than a week, they raised the price to 376,990 saying, you know what? I think this house is worth more than we, we, we started it off too low. All right, gradually raised it up even more and more to 380,990. And after 32 days, just one month, um, they did get um, a buyer for that asking price of 380,990. Now this one here worked out to $170 a square foot. Um, that's pretty good. And they also gave them $10,000 in concessions towards closing costs. Was it was another new home, and it was a, a builder deal where they did have one of those deals where they were paying most of your closing costs. So. This is a case where, you know, think about it. You know, what do you do? You know, it started off low. So if you would have went in there when they first listed this thing and got it, but everyone says, no, I'm not gonna do it right off the bat because I know the price is gonna come down. Well, in this case, the price went up about $40,000, okay? Now, the last one I showed you, <laughs> man, if you would have paid a million, you would have been sick, <laughs> all right? So, um, you know, what do you do? It depends on the house, depends on the neighborhood. Generally, it depends on where it's at, okay? Because we all know the same house in a different neighborhood can get a lot more money. All right, okay, next we're looking at the condominium. Okay, this one here is built in 1997, just over 1,000 square feet. Okay, it's in a complex that's three stories total high. So we've got the year and the stories going against this one. Okay, as far as that new law that's gonna be going into effect, and it's a two bedroom, two bath. 
All right, let's take a look over here on the side, just see what their monthly um, maintenance fees are. 636 right now. But, you know, I mean, they're taking a chance at this one. Of course, of course this is a condo um, sold below because we don't have one that's sold above. Let's look at the history. Okay, this one here started out at $495,000. After 87 days on the market, they had lowered the price to $484,900 and took an offer for $435, which was probably a good idea. Okay, that one works out to a bargain at $416 a square foot. Okay, there was a concession of $250 for repairs, which was basically nothing when you're looking at those numbers. Okay, what did these people pay for? Back in 2013 in November, they paid $220,000. So let's put it into an appreciation calculator. And as we can see, they had it for over 10 and a half years and got 6.59%. So they actually did good considering these things. Okay, considering the fact that we went through this okay correction that we've been going through some although some prices have gone up but also the condo mess they're surviving the condo mess with those numbers they got out they i think they did well you know when you get all this information just thrown at you you know sometimes it's tough you know when you're a buyer trying to figure out what to do you know do you do you sit on the fence and wait or what you know I mean, who knows? The, the people that tell you to wait, are they going to compensate you if things go up? The people that tell you to buy now, are they going to compensate you if things go down? So, you know, what do you do? I just try to give you the real numbers here every week and then let you decide what to do. This is Bubble Watch, and this is, this is season three we're in, and week 11 is in the can. And until week 12, I'm out of here.